Hello, beautiful one. Who I has it going? Thank you so much for fucking joining us over here. This is the Adamus episode 19. Um, we were a little late. We missed last session. As, and as I'm sure that you can all tell, I'm in a very different space. I am in Eastern Standard Time now. I'm overseas and still doing a little move. So if future oh, things crazy. happen and there's... Uh, if, 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 if there's like, oh, we have to skip this episode or this is taking a little bit long, it's all because there's a big move happening. Don't worry about it. Anyway, hi, hi how's it going? I'm your SG Space God, I'm Matt, or Captain Crail, but all things. I, they, he, uh, pronouns, and uh, today we're recording on a blood moon. So if we're all wacky and a little bit weird, it's because, um, I don't know what happens on blood moon. Demon gods rise and take over things? I need people who are, like who that. know more about moons to comment. The the moon bison come down and, and rain upon us. <laughs> ah, so if we get cut up Good. halfway through, it's because of moon bison. That's true. People used to believe that bison lived on the moon. Aww. Do they? So cool. No. Uh, I don't know. Now, I've never been to the moon. Have you been to the moon? We have pictures of people on the. Do not start with the whole. Yeah, I have. Thing. I have we'll pictures of over. my my room being empty. It doesn't mean that I didn't. I don't live in my room. It no, just but means people that tested I the, at the picture at the time. The atmosphere is too thin to sustain any form of living life on the moon's surface, and the moon itself is not cavernous enough to contain things within it. <laughs> nor with the. At I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> my immediate response is going to be like, "Yeah, this dick's too big for blah blah blah." But it's still here, but I decided to not... I, I couldn't come up with a thing quick enough, so you're going to get the foundations of a joke. Dylan is judging me. Hey, Dylan, do you want to do socials? Yeah! <laughs> Hi, I'm Dylan. I believe normal things about the moon. Uh, and you can find me at Super Dylan on all of social medias. All of them. Everywhere. Every single place. Very it's diversifying. I'm diversifying. <laughs> I'm putting little pictures on the little square machine, uh, and I'm mad about it. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what I am doing. Oh, so someone else go. Yeah, someone else go. Norton, do you want to go since you're uh, next to Dylan on the little screen that we have? Well, I'm always next to Dylan, even in not reality, in my heart. Ah. Yeah. Uh, hey everyone, my name is Nordina Likadir, my pronouns are he, him, and you can catch me everywhere. Again, every social media. I'm trying. I'm trying to make it every social media, at Werewolf Feels, uh, except for Facebook. Because fuck that place. Um, that's probably going to change too. Also, by the way, it's a great time to shout out that uh, on the Atomless, we have our own Atomless socials. Every well, not everywhere, but like TikTok, I think, Twitter, Instagram. You can follow yes. at the Atomless, where those places are found, uh, and find our social media intern doing their best. Very good. Beautiful, wonderful Momo O'Brien. Hello, my name is Momo O'Brien. She, her. You can find me everywhere at Momo underscore O'Brien. I make content about immersive experiences, and I don't think the moon exists. There you go. I've, se I've seen the pictures. I've read the books. Still don't believe it. Yeah. I agree, to be honest. I'm I'm right there with you. Then explain tides. Um, explain. They just moved. No, no, I'm not. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I think there's a big fish in the middle of the earth that just goes thump thump. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Have you ever... If you get like a... If you've ever been in a bath, there's waves and stuff, and... The, the moon doesn't affect those. It's you. There's a lot of fish in the sea, and they're all making <laughs> tiny little waves, and then those are making bigger waves. And then people like, jump in the waves for fun, which make bigger waves on the other side of the planet. You know when you go to a backyard party with a person who has an above-ground pool, and the only thing to do is just swim in a circle until it makes a whirlpool? <laughs> here's, here's the thing, guys. As I say this without any sort of sarcasm, all of those are more plausible to me, a 28-year-old woman, than the moon does it. I don't understand how tide works. This isn't part of the bit. I, I think... 
it, it sounds like witchcraft. It's just a gravitational yeah. pull of. Um, um. I got gravitational pull, but I, I can guarantee anything you say after that is gonna go right over my teeny tiny little head. Andre, what do you feel about the moon? Yeah, what are your moon opinions? I think the moon is a demon. A demon sent to haunt us all from our, 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 the moment we open our eyes to the moment we close them forever. Um, hey everybody, I'm Andre. <laughs> you can find me at Andre Vera Art on Twitter, Instagram, and I made a Tumblr, but I haven't posted anything there. But follow me on Tumblr. Follow me on Steam. That's a deal. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the Adamus official socials are going to be on Steam now. I'm, I Steam literally saw goals. someone advocate sincerely that we should all go to LinkedIn recently, and I'm just like, oh you God, know what? Why? It really is the why? end. Let's go. <laughs> hey, listen, who's on LinkedIn? That would be fun. We can My boss. I'm not going there. And then we could get them to listen to a fun little podcast. <laughs> that could be neat. That'd be fun time. Anyway, you can also check out my website, Andrevera Art, or Andrevera.art. You can see my portfolio. You can see a bunch of the actual plays I'm in, including the Atomless. And uh, you should also apply for my commissions because I have a, a small queue. And, you know, the holidays are coming up. Maybe I could make you a little holiday commission picture present for your friends or family. It's the time of year for that. It is the time of year. I agree. So, hey, do you have no. a, um, are you currently, uh, in, like, a TTRPG sort of game and you have, like, uh, a animal companion that follows the party around and everyone loves so much? Or you just want a fun, interesting monster? Aren't you very arts commissions are open? Go, do that. Very good in animals. Also, okay. very, like, anthropomorphic animals. Very good in anthropomorphic yes. animals. Furries. Anthemos furry. Let's make that money. Just get into this. Let's make that money. Give my friend money, please. Okay. I'm hungry. Previously, on the Atomless. Azan, he? Ike. She. Uh, my name is Theoriac. What's up? My name's Sky. Welcome to the patchwork, my dudes. Everyone, welcome to Wild Times. The only person who Send knows an email. that- Send email! And we'll grab Lepore, chuck him out the window. And the park's mascot melts away. And there is just this humanoid female form. Theriac. Doctor. I believe we need to talk. Why do you want to do this? I want what's best for the animals. I can stop the other two board members now. We can spin the story that I did go rogue and you put a stop to it. Just do it. Just do it. Muffled movements behind the door, and then <laughs> you can type in a specific code that will reduce me to a base AI instinct. No one would be any the wiser. Was it worth it? I have remorse, but if I continued to do what I had done without changing it, this place would fester. You have a lead on where the next crystal is. The planet Nos in the Vanir system. Pay no mind to the signs. Pay no attention to the broken monoliths, the signs of destruction flowing throughout all things. Ignore the embers of the fires, the banging at your door. The screams of the prophets. Nothing you do will change where the bullet is heading. It's only been a few hours since you all shared in each other's revelry, and now the joy of the taste of Saga's smog wine has dried in your mouth, leaving a dust-ridden dryness. The creak of your bones can now be felt as you wake from the party that you had the night before. Keelan and Flair went back to their ship for the night. Scrap seemed to have slept in the captain's chair and has left 
a thread-ridden blanket strewn out as he has left this morning for some reason. After the party, when you all decided to go to bed, where is everyone? Where did you end up falling asleep? Did you go back to your chambers? Did you sleep in a certain room? Or in a place which you shouldn't be passing out from all the fun? Freaking out, dude. I have my whole a whole entire room. Just just for me now. I'm hanging out there for the rest of my life. <laughs> uh Sky, your room is what almost looks like a small 90s arcade now. You have a pinball machine, you have a little uh, stick shooter there. Um, did you end up falling asleep? I don't know if I did. I think I'm probably just too excited. Uh... Everyone else? What is everyone else doing? Um, Ike will um, kind of just hang out in her little space uh, and play around with Verple for a while until she falls asleep, probably. Uh, Verple, this weird little rat armadillo pill bug thing mm -hmm. uh, is uh, shied away for a lot of the party since there was a lot of it was a lot of loud people having fun and yelling and uh, are laughing at each other and um, since this isn't the natural habitat of verbal even though verbal is quite used to uh, normally the, the species that Verple is would be used to the loud noises, but also they kind of excel at being hidden and scurrying away. But after you retired to your room, uh, Verple curled up next to you and you're, in, you're snuggling each other as its long anteater nose gives a... <sighs> A little <laughs> cartoon-esque snore. Yeah. Good. Uh, Theriac. Uh, Theriac's fucking hammered. Um, <laughs> it's probably, like, face down, ass up on the couch. Like, the communal couch. <laughs> with, like, one arm, like, slung over the side of the, the, the backrest. Like, just demolished. <laughs> from, and from I, this line. may I at one point walk into the kitchen, probably close to 2 a.m., open the fridge, get grab a bag of Cheetos, grab an energy drink. As I'm shoving the Cheetos in my mouth, I'm like, are you asleep? Do you want some water? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you some water, Dr. Theriac. I'm going to get some water and I'm just going to leave it beside them. And then, if they don't wake up, I'll go back to bed. Theriac doesn't move. I don't even know if the does Theriac breathe? <laughs> I don't think any of us can answer that question <laughs> but you, Andre. Oh, I think that's a you question, Bubs. I no, Theriac argue... breathes. No, yes. Theriac breathes. I would argue yes, because plants breathe. Because yeah. plants breathe. Yeah. It yeah. depended on whether, whether they breathe through lungs that they have, or they breathe like plants, where they kind of my question in through their roots is this theriac breathe oxygen or carbon dioxide um whatever the plants do carbon dioxide. dioxide carbon dioxide and you expel oxygen that's great that's great that's why we can continue to exist on the patchwork for forever <laughs> forever <laughs> the patchwork is a self-sustaining crew if only Theriac could grow other smaller garlics for sustenance. Um, <laughs> okay. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Um, Azam, what are you... Where did, where did you fall asleep? Azam didn't fall asleep. Yeah. 
uh, after witnessing the crash, he spent a good amount chunk of the night just like looking up scanners and news agencies and like to see how the damage was. This is a planet, right? Twenty four hours, um, and then stayed awake thinking about just everything. Uh, he's been alone in his room for the most part, but when you see him in the next morning, you'll notice there's little like black coal like crusties in the corner of his eyes because he's just built up a lot of sleep. And so now he's kind of bleary eyed. It, the, the satellite crash does make the news cycle, but it, all of the headlines relate it are, are kind of either downplaying it, just like a satellite crashed, satellites crash, or are catastrophizing comparing the satellites falling here to the satellites falling on Saga and comparing the uh, there's there's just there's a lot of theorizing going around and not much uh, not 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 much of people actually in the know The, I, oh, go on. No, you go. You go. You go. Do something. Of course. Because we've spent a lot of time on, on a dun, mm -hmm. and this has definitely happened off screen. But with his arm wanting to like keep eye over Theria, keep eye over a dun. Could I say I've built up a, a network of small contacts, or would you let me roll for that? Hmm. Um, it depends what you mean and want by that. Uh, do you want a network of small contacts like just kind of just just random everyday people, people who work on a dun, um, people who like visit and are staying for like extended periods, or if you're wanting like a more in the know, like they are permanent residents who don't work at wild times. They are in, like, the, uh... You know, just outside permanent residents of Adun, but not involved in wild times in any way. Um, both of which... I think the being involved with people who aren't involved with wild times is probably way harder than just having, like, you have been speaking to the natural res like the residents and workers of wild time since a lot of the workers of wild times have been coming up to the patchwork to help scrap build stuff since scrap has been talking to a lot of people and helping them um it also depends on what you want to do with that network of contacts uh i just want to keep uh an eye upon how wild times is functioning um and how dune is so i think i'm gonna go for low-level people like janitors and the like um who primarily work at wild times because that's the people who i've had most contact with okay. and i've like set up nice email chains with them just chatting about their life sure. how they are how is it doing going um hey, did you hear about that satellite that kind of thing give me a diplomacy check then there's gonna be a gather information uh thing is you're just like gathering a network of people who, Absolutely. Um, you uh, I can add my specialty die to my skill expertise die to this. I just need to find out what it is because it's it's been a hot minute. It's been a hot minute, my friends. A hot bloody minute. Uh, it's a D six plus one. Okay, great. So diplomacy. <laughs> All right. It's a twenty two. You have definitely been able to gather, like, a collection of uh, low-level employees of Wild Times and people who aren't necessarily in the know but do have their ear to the ground purely based on what they do for a living. Um, so, yeah, you can have that. And you're asking them what their, like, 
what their thoughts are on the satellite crashing and, and whatnot. There's this one Lushunta called uh, uh, Tozi, a l large, like six and a half foot um, female presenting, uh, almost like, I wouldn't say mantis, but has the little antenna. Uh, this like light green skin she you 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 met her because she works at raven's roost she cleans she's like the uh, just a janitor in raven's roost and whilst you over the last few weeks have been checking up on theriac and making sure that they're okay and well, not necessarily that they're okay, but checking up on them definitely. You had just seen them around and then struck, struck up conversation one day. Oh, well, um, I don't know about this, uh, the satellite crashing. I don't think it's a big deal. I just heard about it, but um, this would be today you're talking to them. Um, I don't believe it's that big of a deal. Things like that happen all the time. Satellites crash, tech fails. I know that a lot of things like that have been happening on Saga, some on Ran as well, but who knows? I mean, this you know how this place is. They're always cutting corners on, on budget. Who, who says they have been cutting corners on satellite technology as well? I, um, I'm gonna message back. As a favor, would you mind just, um, Keep it in touch about how many satellites fall if something like that happens again. We're heading out of system, so I won't be able to collect them for a while, but... Okay. As a, like a small question mark sent before just the question mark, and then a, sure, okay. So, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um... I think that's the most I can do. And I'm just going to put that information, along with some information I've collected on sa uh, Saga's fallen satellites, and now the information that there's some on Ron, into a little folder on my uh, very decrepit computer. <laughs> Why not? Um, I. Yes? You... I wouldn't necessarily say sleep well, because did you have a lot to drink yesterday? I had, I had a bit. You know when you drink a lot and your sleep is uninterrupted, but you wake and it still feels like you're a bit of a mess? Sure. <laughs> you are quickly and rudely awoken by your phone ringing. Um, when you look at your phone, you can see that you have uh, five missed calls. All of them from Quinn. And Quinn is, is calling you again. Is it still ringing right now? It begins ringing, yeah, as you look at it. Oh, hi, hello. Oh, sorry. God. Where the fuck have you been? Um, oh, well, I, I, sorry. Hi. Hi, hello. Um, no, uh, sorry, yes. Uh, hi, hello. I, I hope you're well and all that. Um, we spoke briefly about uh, you doing a job for me on Saga, but I don't seem to know where you are. Are you still on planet? Or, and if you are, where? Um, no, actually. So, I, I, I had to go take, uh, another quick job, uh, in system. Um, but that job's kind of got a little out of hand, actually. So, I am, uh, and I wasn't sure when you needed me for 
the other job. Uh, is is does that mean it's no? Uh, yeah, you know when when you can make it. Um, so you're in system. What, what like? Where exactly are you? Oh, uh, well... Um, can um, you really quickly give me a sense motive wisdom check, please? Yes, I can! Oh, it's good. Okay. Uh, 21? They have never asked you this amount of questions before. It's it's less alarming, but there is something odd about th the way Quinn is speaking to you and the fact they keep asking where you are. They probably miss me, which is nice. Um. <laughs> okay, um... Oh, well, actually, I'm, um, well, not on a dune anymore, but we were there for a bit, and that, uh, had, that was where the job was, and that's all, uh, taken care of now, so now I'm just, uh, well, we're, I think, possibly headed to a new job, but, I mean, if you need something now, I, uh, well, depending on what it is, I could figure it out, but, you know, gotta keep working. Taking what comes my way, you know. Yeah, um, okay, so you're not on a, you're not on a dune anymore? Are you, are you in space? Are you traveling? Um, yes. Right, okay. Um... Yeah, no. Come to the office. I have a, uh, um, I, ha I have a, uh, important, something important to, uh, talk to you about. Well, um, Quinn, I, is it, is it something for work or can I, can I come and, can we talk about it now? Uh, no, it's better if we meet in person, I think. If you if you could come if you could uh, uh, they 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 stop speaking and with the twenty one you hear another voice at the other end of the call slightly muffled and then you hear Quinn's voice slightly muffled. You're not able to pick out what they're saying, but you assume that you're listening to a very quick, brief conversation as Quinn has his hand over the microphone before. Um, actually, don't meet at, um, let's not meet at, at, at uh, Brewery Mining. Uh, I actually think it'll be better if you um, come to my house. Do you know where I live? I... I've never been to Quinn's house. I You've never been imagine. to Quinn's house. Like, you might have dropped off something before or heard him talk about where it is, but I don't suppose you would know where it is. Um, not exactly, but just let me know. Um, I can see. I, I would have to check with the captain i'm flying under uh if i can make it back okay sure um yeah no i'm sure it'll be um i'm sure it'll be it'll be okay uh we'll see you here in a little bit i'll i'll text you i'll text you my address okay um i hope Gwen, is everything all right yep there's nothing wrong over here okay I'll text you the address. All right. All right. Um, after hanging up and checking up on some social media, after a few minutes go by, you get a text 
that says Quinn's address with another text coming through after saying don't busy yourself I'm going to call back okay I settle in for a minute I Af pull verbal into my lap for support after about a half an hour you get another call from Quinn and picking up what the fuck have you been doing I've just no, been working okay you've been working doing something because people have come to my house asking for you I don't know I don't know what fucking business you've been doing but people are looking for you now I, I I'm going to listen I I don't know I, I I don't know what's what's been going on but I I gave them I, I I told them what you just said because they asked me to call you and I did and Listen, I don't know what you've been up to, but it's going to look very bad on the company if you keep this up. Oh, well, look, Quinn, I, I'm not doing anything. There's... Quinn, there's... If people are after me, don't you think that those aren't very good people? It doesn't matter what the quality of people is when they're arriving at my door, I. Well, so then I'm not there. You shouldn't be incriminated by that at all. Alright. I want you to come meet me on Saga. I also, I don't know, how did you, what... <laughs> that aside, even, what is any of this with... How did you know about Playground? Oh, well, that's because, Quinn, I was meaning to ask you, you sent me on a job, and that's kind of how, if you really tie it all together, that's really how things wound up this way in the first place, but you sent me on a job to go get those drinks for Burry Mining. And I did, because I'm happy for any jobs that you give me, but, well, you know that I'm still, partially at least, a lower decker. You returned those drinks down to the lower decks. Listen, it's such a job to question where things go, okay? Your job is to just pick up the things that I ask you to go pick up, okay? Well, and I did. Yeah. But sending me texts saying... Asking about those things, that's not appropriate, okay? And if you if you keep this up, then I think we're going to have to talk about your position in this company, because I, I, I think that you are... You... I'm just not comfortable with the attitude that you have been showing recently. All right? And we have a job that we need doing. I would like you to come and... Come to Saga, meet me at my house, do the job, and then whatever happens with that happens, okay? Well, okay, but can I just ask if people are coming to your house and you're worried about that, shouldn't we maybe meet somewhere else? I think it's best for both of us that you just do as I say from now on. Well, okay. I, 
I, I... I still have to check with the captain I'm flying under, but I'll let you know what we can do. I'm sorry people showed up at your house. That's... This whole thing is quite stressful. I don't care what the captain of your ship says. If they can drop you off somewhere close and you take a connecting, then fine. I... Can I... If I need to roll again, that is fine. I want to see if I picks up on, like, worry or fear from Quinn? Sure. Uh, it will be a very low check, but you can go for sense motive again. Oh, shit. Okay. Ooh. That's... Numbers. Twenty-seven. You don't normally hear Quinn flustered. They... He's always... He's always kept a very... Like, he knows what he wants. Mm -hmm. And whenever you normally speak to him, it's for a job or the receiving of a job. Right. This... He seems unsure, but quite curt with how he's speaking to you he you believe that he is scared but seems to have already kind of made up his mind of what like he's formulating a plan as he's speaking to you and it doesn't seem to be in your favor okay look I I won't mince words I people showing up at your house is my fault apparently uh so i will figure something out um i i will i will message you when i've when i've figured it out okay do that Right. Just be safe. Text me when you get planet side. Mm-hmm. And then he hangs up. I go find Scrap and ask if we can call a salad time. <laughs> As you walk into the main hub of, of the patchwork scrap walks uh seems to be walking down from uh some of the the pr uh, promenade of shops uh with uh a like medium-sized baggie of food uh, in tow is uh flair who is drinking like a this like overly mascotted drink with a curly straw as he seems to be nursing his head from drinking way too much and mm -hmm. uh, Scrap seems to be in quite good spirits even though you can see under the bags of his eyes that he is extremely tired um, but he wanders in as you 
uh, as you leave. Um, hey, I have just gotten us uh, all some breakfast to start with. I haven't uh, had a smog wine party in uh, uh, quite some time. Uh, it's fucking expensive on Saga now. You just can't fucking get it anywhere. So. Well, you didn't know me on Saga. <laughs> you know what? That is true. I did. I didn't know you. Uh, and that was that was a lot of fun. I can't remember. I think uh, after like the third shot, um, whilst we were all playing Ynet, I can't remember a single thing. So uh, <laughs> I have bought us all greasy burger food to uh, uh, cool everyone down and make everyone. Uh, feel a little better because we do have uh, uh, we do have a uh, uh, quite the travel which is going to be starting with us today but I had fun did you have fun I did actually I had a great time yeah um which is gonna make this very difficult but I actually have a possible favor to ask of you and the rest of the crew so easy sure thing anything you like what's up well, I don't say that yet. It's kind of big. I, well, I, I'd like to explain it to everyone, if that's okay. Can we maybe rally the crew for some breakfast and and a little discussion, if possible? Absolutely. Yeah, let's have a, um, let's have a, a meeting. Sorry, Flair, can you go back to the ship? I'll call you afterwards. You're like... Okay. Sorry, Flair. <laughs> no, it's fine. Can I just get my... He's like, yep, there's a meal. And then Flair takes it and then does like a very hungover little bow and then turns and walks off um, with him and Keelan's food. Uh, Scrap goes up to Theriac and does a little shake as Theriac is still very sprawled out. He's like, hey, buddy. Hey, we're going to have a little team meeting. Are you, are you good, pal? Oh... Oh, you did so well. I'm so I'm so, I'm so proud of how hard you went. It was a lot of fun to see the doctor. Uh, the doctor was in, as as uh, we would say. My roots feel withered. Hey, listen, it's all good. We're gonna get you in some sunlight. Would, do you want like a? Uh, if we just play, you know, I need water. water. I need water so bad. Well, there's some and water just right like there. sticks, sticks their whole like arm in the glass that Sky provided <laughs> and just like absorbs it. <laughs> um, Scrap bangs on the doors for Azav and, and Sky. Hey, we're having a team right. meeting. Morning, eggs. Who wants eggs? I'll make eggs. No, I got it. I got food. I have uh, I, uh, uh, I went to a fast food place um, on the promenade and I just got like a bunch of burgers and chips, all that shit. So. Scrap, why would you get food? We've got food at home. I can cook for you. You don't need to go out. There yeah, but it was food. the it was the day it was the day after drinking. You don't have home cooked food after drinking. You I go didn't out drink. You... No, but it was a collective drink, an emotional collective drink, and its takeaway <laughs> is not optional. You know, guys, uh... and no. <laughs> Scrap, just because we have an emotional takeaway doesn't mean we need to order takeaway. You know, we could, I could make eggs or chips or... Um, oh, you I can make more stuff. Things. There is a bunch left over that you made, but I'm just saying I've already purchased. Uh, like, it's literally sitting in there is a bunch of uh, other food. So, go get your I meats. can go make some juice. Yeah. Nice. Uh, Sky! <laughs> Guy's in the kitchen having a panic attack. Minor panic attack. What's well, a good time for me to show up at the kitchen? There, there you go, yeah. Sky. Uh huh. What are we doing? I'm trying to make that fruit salad Theriac taught me to make for their blossoming day. How's how's my driving? Well, you don't need to whip a fruit salad. So what you've made is actually a slurry. Um, but we could add some ice and make a smoothie bowl. I was kind of hoping that I could show them it's like, ah, I learned to make the thing you, you taught me to make. But this is my fifth attempt. 
worthy of us. I don't know. I've been in here for like hours. But what's going on? Because no one does this without, you know, something going on. Oh, well, that's embarrassing because nothing's going on. I think I'm just really out of practice. Okay. Okay. Um, well, why don't you give me the recipe and we'll, we'll make it together sometime. And as for this, we'll just do something with it. And it'll be great. And, and Feriak will love it. Just say it was inspired. It was inspired by the recipe you gave. Okay, I can work with that. Yeah. Oh my goodness, you made my favorite. And just like <laughs> takes it and just. <laughs> just and, and just slurps it. We have a team meeting, apparently. Yeah, so I'm glad that we're all uh, looking uh, bright up, bright eyed, bushy tailed. Well managed. Uh, I get something to bring to the table. Um, Scrap has kind of gotten everyone to sit around a small table that has like a holographic kind of map of the galaxy that has um, that is lighting just above it. Uh, it has a small uh, ray of red light that shows like a you are here and you are all sat around it. Um, Right, so thank you all for coming. Yeah, we have our first team meeting on uh, the, the current edition of the patchwork. Uh, good job, everyone, for yesterday. We really fucked it up. I feel really positive with how uh, how yesterday went. I uh, has something to bring and has called a team meeting for us. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm sorry to do this because I know that. My head's a little foggy, and some of us might also feel that way. So, I'm so sorry to have to bring up a odd topic, but... Well, um... Do you know how the Void wants me? And there's, like, a, a bounty and, and things and... Mm. All of that. Well, as it turns out, back on Saga, they are harassing people who know me in the lower decks or in the upper decks. Um, Wait, how did you hear this? Uh, well, I got a call this morning. Actually, I got six calls this morning um, from my friend Quinn, who uh, had people strong arming at his house, like his place of rest, not even at the office. This is um, the same Quinn who left you on the VA-11? Oh, well, that was just a miscommunication, bury mining, uh, um, wait, no, that's wrong. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, which right. one do I work? That's Rory. which one do I work? Okay. Yeah, you work for okay. Mining, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> no, sorry. Um, I was like, hold on. Who? Else? <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, so that was just a misunderstanding. The the company flew out uh, before uh, I was able to get back, and they did. They just. They were in the wrong place at the wrong time, but that's sure. okay. Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Wait, hold up. You got a call from Saga. Yes. So communication's back on then. Well, it's been on and off, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, like they, it, you, you, from your little uh, news cycle, you would know that people keep putting satellites in the sky and calls. Um, although extremely rare and hard to get a hold of, like, it would be easier to fly off-planet and get a call at, like, a space... call through on a space station. Calls still can come through occasionally. Mm. This is five in a row. That's different. Yes. True. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, it's apparently open now. My phone's been working. Um, but... He sounded very distressed, understandably, and truthfully, that's my 
fault. So, uh, he's asked me to go back to Saga to help um, resolve that. And I wouldn't ask you to go all the way back because I know we have other places to be. But if there's somewhere you could drop me off and I could go and and handle it and that'll be okay. So Maybe. let me understand this correctly. So your friend is clearly upset because there is an urgency to find you and your idea after they have been harassed and followed back to their home is to go alone? Well, it's not my first choice, for sure, but I I don't want to put all of you in any kind of distress. Right, um, let's not even be ridiculous here, all right? Let's, let's be very clear. So long as you wish for us to drop you off on Saga, so long as you wish for us to come, we shall do it. Whoa. There's no question about it. Wait, I'm I'm sorry. I might I'm confused. I think I must have missed something. Why do you have to go to Saga? Well, because I've got to somehow get these people off of Quinn's. Who is back. Quinn? He's my friend. Well, what 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 what's what what do you two do? To did you meet at quilting? Well, that's not a particular hobby of mine. Um, but no, we we work together. Is Quinn your boss? Well, sort of. I mean, not what, technically. It's a yes but, or no question. Well, I'm more of a freelancer, so it's not really that's like... That's an employer. That's... I... I mean, Scrap's kind of my boss, and I think we're pretty friendly. That's not my point. It's it's not that cut and dry. We are friends, and I don't like the idea of people showing up at his house. And and if they're showing up at his house, frankly, that means that they might show up at other people's houses. I that I just don't. Listen, if if they're going round... Okay. Cards on the table. I've done stuff like this before. You don't really go round people's houses just to, like, randomly rough people up. You go round people's houses to find out where they are or to draw them to the house. This bounty on your head is no joke. If... if If the void... I have a feeling that they're trying to get you to go back to Saga. And I, do we even know if... I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know this, this Quinn guy, but do we even know if, if, you know, he can... Isn't he like a high-up company guy? Is there, is yes. there, like, no doubt that he's not just trying to get you to fly back, back planet side so you're easily trackable? Well, and if, I don't... If you're wanted, wouldn't he just want to turn you in? What, would any of you want to turn me in? I don't know this Quinn. I can't speak on behalf of his... I don't think any of you or anyone that I care about would want to turn me in. But I do think that it would be quite scary to have people showing up at your doorstep demanding for a so-called criminal. So, so I, I have your back no matter what. I love step one of the plan. Let's say we get to Saga. What are we going to do? Well, um, I would say that maybe we 
trying to mess with whatever they've got on me. Ow! It's... Well, I have ways. Or there's always, I don't know exactly, but I know that just letting people be harassed on account of me is, is also not an option. I, you and what army? Well, if you have another idea, something that we could do from not on Saga to stop this from happening. Again, I, I will do whatever you want me to do. And in fact, I don't know if I trust you enough for me to share every opinion in my head because it's going to sway yours like butter. If I were you, I'd get past this stage of grief. Work your way up to acceptance. And just accept that that's going to happen to people because of me? I'm not saying it's not awful, but I just, I, I'm, and I'm not saying there's no hope. I'm saying there's not a huge likelihood of us being able to go back to Saga and take down an entire organization. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, and... Wait. Did your parents call you? No, they haven't, but... You see... Why did they get why... to... Why did they get to Quinn, though? Listen, if you're trying to if you're trying to get someone to go back, you don't go to their fucking employer unless they like know who they are. You would shoot straight for the for the parents, the close contacts, the people who's going to scare them into immediately coming back. Well, and I also I have to say I don't know that my parents would get to that point. I don't know if they would call. They might if, just... If you were to be the void, and you would... Your parents refuse to call, I imagine Scrap and Sky and I can all agree. You can always take a picture of them holding a paper and send it to you as a threat. Well, they haven't done that yet, but I'd really like that to not happen. Are we sure this is... Who do you work for again? Wait, do I know who she works for? You know it's Brewery Mining, yeah. You yeah. also know that Brewery Mining and Cert Energy have recently merged companies. Um, oh, did the so merge happen yet? Or the, it, the, mer the merge has the merge has happened. It yeah, it's okay. It's happened thought... slash is still in the turnover stage. It's... Got it. Okay, I wasn't sure if that was complete. Uh, okay, so instead, I say, what are the chances that Cert Energy and Brewery Mining work with a void? Well, all right, as I'm. Cards on the table, I only found out about the Void fairly recently, at least in as much detail as I've learned. I've, I've heard very small mutterings, but I can't think of times when I felt like they were in cahoots together. Um... It doesn't seem... It doesn't seem quite necessary, actually. I mean, the companies are quite large on their own. Why would they need that kind of... And Azom's right. How the fuck did he call you? We called me on our phone. I mean, they do work from time to time. I mean, from time to time. If he if he was able to call you six times in a row, five, five times. Oh, I'm very hungover. Please, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. 
point being, that is a high turn, a, a high amount of calls for something that's spotty at best. Hey, uh, I have, I have an idea. Can I try something? Yeah. It's probably not going to work because we can't get calls to Saga, but I, let me see this guy's number. Sure. I give you my phone. Beep boop, beep boop, beep boop, 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 beep boop, boop, beep. Um, are you calling Quinn? Yeah. It goes to ring. And then, after a few tones, what is it? My name's Skyscraper. I'm looking for someone named Ig. Oh, you're typing it in on your phone. I'm saying that. And yeah, it's on no, speaker. You're, you, you, you are not calling from Ike's phone. You're calling from Sky's phone. I'm calling from my phone. Oh, and it's on speaker. Fuck sake. Listen. I don't know where. Okay? I've given you... I, I called. And, and she is near a dun in space. That's about as close as I got. Okay? This is... This isn't like a freelance contract job, okay? I just need someone to do it, and we'll split it. Keep talking. Why? I've, I've told, I've told you it. It's there's five hundred thousand credits that was asked from Playground. Playground gave it to me. Why? If you get it through me, then yes, then I will split it 50-50, and then that's 250,000 credits each. I am mouthing words to Sky. Why this operative? Why Ig? Why Ig? Because they have a huge fucking bounty on their head, Azam. I don't know. Playground said that message came from up top that she stole a bunch of money. I don't know, isn't this your, like, this is your job, correct? Your yes. job isn't to ask questions, your job is just to, is just to take the, is, is to just take the target. And I'm pretty sure Ike was dead or alive. I, our job is to figure out how much Playground told you. I need to ask questions so I can do my job. Okay. Well, I don't know where Ike is. I've asked her to come back, but you, you're you going to have to either be very quick or wait in line, because she's going to be at my uh, at my house on Saga. I'm in place? T I mean, I don't know. She's going to text date. me when she's planted side. Sky is suaver than me. She says time and date in a real cool tone. <laughs> I don't know. She said she'll text me when she gets planted side. I hang up. So, Quinn is calling in for bounty on you. That's what that is. Exactly what I suspected. Why? Why else would? Quinn's if... not been harangued or harassed. He's been cahoots. That's trade word. C cahoots and using it right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. He said he'd split it 50 50, which means that he's kind of working as an informant. He said the playground got it sent from up top, and I, I have a feeling that uh, school is the one that called it in. And then he must have heard about it from playground and is pulling up some form of bounty. Because he has easy access. I do you need a minute. I just think maybe. 
But I do think it's... It has to be more complicated. The Void is very powerful and influential and... Someone that knows me would not just turn me in if it weren't dire. And I just think that I be... mm -hmm. organized crime wouldn't offer 50 50. Quinn would have had to offer it. Quinn probably called them. Called Playground to begin with. Quinn betrayed you. I, um... It, it, anything's possible. I wasn't in the room where it happened, but... Yeah, 50-50 aren't our rates. Sky, what would you do? I'm doing it, but I'll go back if that's what you want to do. Going back is well, a death trap. Sorry, I don't mean to cut anyone off, but going back is a surefire way of getting us killed. Yeah, I know. Well, I'm not going to do that, then. I'm not going to ask you to do that, and I... Maybe I just need to... Think. There's got to be a way to find out more or figure out a different solution. It can't be this simple. That's all. It has to be more complicated. It has to be more nuanced than that. And so just sorry, Scrap. We don't have to go back to Saga. But I do need to find out what to do instead. Can I offer my uh, slightly biased but ultimately humble opinion? Okay. If there is a bounty on your head, The longer it goes on for, the more people are going to drop off trying to get it. 500,000 is a lot, but there are people for 500,000 that are on the planets that people are on. There is a way easier target if we keep moving. And particularly, if we drift and we go to Nos. That's several months that we are gone. Basically unfindable. It's essentially waiting for this to blow over. And then we come back and address it then? Well, we're going to have to address it at some point. Right. May I suggest the night of the ball? Oh, the last ball. shebang, perhaps? When is this ball, anyway? That's a great question. I, I don't remember. It's in a few months. Yeah, is it's so right? it's uh, it's Saga's spring now. Um, the ball is always a very, very big event. Um, but you have about 10, 11 months since Saga's years are a little longer than 
hours uh, before the ball actually takes place. Right, so it's going to be quite a few months before that ball happens, but the ball is supposed to be... We have enough well, time to go to a different system, do what we want to do there, and come back. Scrap? I mean, yeah. It'll take us, on estimate, about two and a half months to get from here to the veneer system. Which means it'll take us two and a half months to get back. Which means you have about six months playtime. Around. Okay. So. Oh, that's. Fine. We can. We can. Deal with it then. I'm sorry that I brought this. Stop apologizing. Well, I don't like that this could affect other people, so I am. Ike? Hmm? It affects us because we care about you. Well, and because the Void might try to kill you, so I don't, uh, I don't know. It's not my first time with a <sighs> mark on my head. I'll live. I it's sure not your fault so. in the first place. Logically speaking. If I go around wild times waving a gun and say, I'm gonna kill the first person who doesn't give me Ig, that's not your fault. I'm just waving a gun threatening people it, because I'm asking for one person. That in no way involves you besides the mentioning of your name. Murderers are responsible for their own actions. Not whatever they accuse of having it coming to them. Well, they didn't say necessarily that they were going to kill me. That's not the point. The point is that it's not your fault. All right, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna eat my breakfast in my little cubby, if that's all right. Yeah, but yeah. we can we can go on business as planned. Sorry, Scrap. We can uh, no, keep going. Fine. Yeah, go um, go enjoy your uh, go enjoy your breakfast. Have a nap. I guess gonna go curl up and share her greasy sandwich with Purple, who hopefully has a diet of everything. <laughs> it is, that's true. <laughs> um, I, after you go back to your little cubby hole, Scrap does still stand around the table for a second. That doesn't make any fucking sense. I'm not alone, right? That's a fucking I mean, weird situation. What doesn't make sense? This Quinn thing just doesn't seem... It just... It, I feel like something's... That just seems weird. It's only for 10 grand. 500,000 credits is, you know, it's a power play and it is a lot. Quinn playing along seems weird. I don't know. Maybe it's nothing. It probably is Quinn's nothing. A... Quinn's a company man. I know the type. I've come across him before. No, listen. I, yeah. I get it and I understand that. It's just... I... I don't know. I did actually think they were friends. I know. It's, company men are normally quite cold. Hey, maybe it's fine. And maybe it's absolutely nothing. If... If... Queen is willing to turn over I for such a low profit, we can only assume that he's in dire straits. Correct? Or... If he's that desperate. Or... or Quinn is a fool, man. Someone else is trying to get at Ig, who Quinn works for. Well, I don't know. Mm. Ig has, you know, she's never talked about... I know I know she's like a smuggler, but she's not being caught, 
right? It's not like a thing that a lot of people know about, it's basically only Quinn. And also, Quinn didn't do the hit. I don't think Quinn did the hit at all. I think Quinn is just playing into the part of of getting it. Whatever. I'm Listen, I'm talking up my ass. I'm just a bit confused about the whole situation. I mean, either way, I feel a lot better with Ig staying as far away from Void Planets as possible. Whether Quinn's in on it or not. Yeah. I agree. I do not disagree with Ig that this could be more complex than it first appears. But I uh, disagree with Ig in that it may be to her or Quinn's favor. Mm. So my only concern is getting off, getting out of his system. I feel kind of bad. Do you think she's okay? She just had a bit of a world view shattered. It's two choices. Either she accepts it and lets that part of her brain shatter, or she rejects it, compartmentalizes it, turns it to something else. So, if she's not okay, it's probably a good thing because she accepts Quinn's not friend. And if she is okay, it's probably a bad thing, because she's... Mm. You know what it is? I know what's confusing me. Quinn is called Quinn. A Quinn is not a place. That's just a name. So, he's not involved with Void in any way. But he knows Playground. And turns to you, Sky. That's a big fucking deal. Playground isn't just a, a someone, a random member. They are a powerful fucking person. Yeah, I know, and I don't know anything about Quinn. They could be a god. I don't know. Quinn also said Playground... Go on. Sorry. No, nope, you go. Quinn said Playground called him. If you were a top member of Void, I don't think you'd just be calling people. Hell, I was a rebellion leader. I didn't exactly make my own calls sometimes. Kind of was the whole mystique of it all, right? I don't know. It, it just seems weird that Quinn is so well connected. Anyway. I mean, I, I gotta... I got a couple numbers on my phone that I don't I've... particularly want to call, but... I could call Hive. No, 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 I don't want to call anyone else. I don't want anyone else involved. I just... Quinn is very well connected. Playground is not someone who just randomly meets people. He doesn't randomly call the shots. This is a... a leader of people. They're a fucking violent, very bad person. You can tell by the name he's put in the time. The fact that him and Quinn are dealing with each other, that's what confuses me. It doesn't matter. It's fine. We'll table it. You know something I just realized? Quinn told Ike he was being threatened. He wasn't panicked at all on the phone of Sky. Didn't even shudder when he mentioned Playground's name. He's too calm. I'll be back. And, uh, P Rex gonna go and talk to I. Yeah. Alright. Meeting adjourned, everyone. Yay. I suppose I'll. T Get uh, Flair and Keelan to pack their bags. Yeah. Excuse me. We'll leave in a bit. I'm gonna go to the top of the patchwork. I head out of the patchwork. Syriac, you enter Ike's room. Syriac. Hello? Hi. I'm over here. Oh? Um, Ike is just kind of, uh, 
playing with purple a little bit, and I think what that means is that she's kind of just making her phone do things, so purple gets little little electricity snacks. It's very interesting. Uh, that gremlins acquire you know, oil and electricity to operate their systems, but they still willingly eat organic food. It's really interesting. That is interesting. Purple's very, very interesting. Did mm. you need something? I wanted to um, sit in with you a little bit and talk, if that's all right. Oh, of course. Yeah. Please. I, um, I know you're still you're rattled. Yeah? Well, I, um... I just don't know if I believe everything. I don't know how he could just want to turn me in? I mean, that's not something that you would do if you were if you weren't under extraordinary duress I'd imagine, so I don't know. I just am having a hard time knowing what to think about that. I... Theria kind of like puts their like back against the wall and then just kind of like slides down to like sit with Ike and Verple. Mm -hmm. I wish I didn't know what you were talking about, but I am quite familiar, very recently familiar. Suppose the it's always hard when you're working business and there's a sense of you know camaraderie mm. and there's an idea of uh, of everyone's goal being the same, therefore our our intentions are all the same, and we are all personable and friendly, but um, there's um. There's a danger in that. Well... I just... Maybe it's... Maybe I would have understood to find out that, you know... Quinn... Isn't exactly my greatest friend. That he would literally give me over. Give me up to people who would probably hurt me or take things from me. I mean, it's just a, a lot to consider about a person that you thought you knew well what what do you know about Quinn well as a, as a person that he's very charming and funny 
and hardworking and very ambitious uh, and very successful. He's very ahead of his time in the company. Um, what, what, what is Quinn's favorite food? You know, Matt, I'm wondering if, if I would actually know that. But I, not because they're good I think friends. So. Because yeah. like <laughs> yeah. She's had he's like asked her to go pick it up and yeah. she's brought it to him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, um he actually well, so his favorite food that all of the other people at Bury Mining uh would know is is a steak, usually with asparagus, which I find kind of vile, uh, and mashed potatoes. But really, he's one for a lower decks hot dog sometimes. I've brought them to him quite a lot. All right. And did you eat this with him? Or no. did you drop it off? Well, I just... I just dropped it off. It's a favor. Have you and Quinn ever had any experiences outside of work? Well, I mean, I've I've done some favors for him outside of work. Just that's as not, like a... that's not what that's not what that. Well, friends do each other favors. That's your boss. Only sometimes. No, I, 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 I'm pretty sure he's your boss, whether or not you're on the clock. Well, up until very recently, he was my only friend, so... I... I don't think he was your friend. I think he was using you. Okay. And you know that's... It's not your fault. Yes. Right. That's not. But why does it happen, though? There is an idea within certain business people's heads that there is an expendability to everything. That um, when that every organism or location or resource has a function, and once that function has been utilized and it cannot operate as it once did it is to be discarded I don't think Quinn saw you as a friend Ig. I think he saw you as a resource Is that how everyone sees me? The Iraq will, like, reach their little root hand towards hers. 
I don't. Okay. I believe you, but... I also believed Quinn. Well, what do you know about me? I know that you are the most passionate scientist I've ever known or heard about. I know that you care very much about animals and also ecosystems and biomes and restoration and preservation and education. And I know that you believe in young people getting to learn about life and creatures around them. I know that you feed people to take care of them. I know that you are quite funny sometimes. And I know that you text like you're in a business meeting. And I know that you're a very good communicator. And that's very nice. I bet you if Quinn were asked to list things he knows about you, He'd come up quite a bit short. I do know that you're right about that. What would you say? What do I know about Ike? Yes. Well, this is fun. Well, I know that you have a propensity for accessing technology and a seemingly empathetic psychic connection to much of the technology that we have around us and are able to communicate with them in a way that we cannot. I know that you are quite fond of those who you surround yourself with. I understand that your particular favorite uh, food is cheese. I understand <laughs> that you have an immense propensity for kindness. I understand that you always want to find the answer to situations that don't necessarily make complete sense. I understand that you are likely the most compassionate person I know. And I believe about one in every 15 words is the word um. Oh. <laughs> well, that's true. Etheriac. Mm-hmm. You stay and hang out with Furple and I for a little longer. Mm hmm. Okay. We, I show Theriac how for all the new things I've taught Furple in the last couple of days. <laughs> oh, you know what's interesting is that Furple actually has skin membrane right here, so uh, you can actually like glide a little bit. Oh, that's kind of gross looking. It's a little icky. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you spend the next few hours together, uh, Keelan and Flair arrive with their bags already packed. They put their things in a small 
almost like high school locker that Scrap has set up for some just random personal effects. And Scrap prepares the ship for traveling through the drift. Right. Have we got our course set? We all know where we're going. You are You're muted, muted, Han. Muted, Han. I totally am. Sky comes onto the ship with a Wild Times baseball cap, Wild Times t-shirt, Wild Times jogging pants, and a very, very large Wild Times backpack that looks stuffed to the brim and says, yes, I am ready. Perfect. Hell yeah, I love the haul that you got. How much, no, you got no idea. How much merch did you get? Did you leave Not this in my room? I can't, what is that? <laughs> collectible it's a, cup. The collectible cup. Oh, a I wouldn't have left cup. it in your room on purpose. Can I have it back? Um, sure. Just, just be aware that um, it is a a work facility, and um, it does pose a hazard. You know what? You can keep it. That's probably a good call. There's probably some uh, uh, petri fungus that might have escaped the lab earlier this morning. So probably a good call. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll pass on the petri fungus. Thanks, Doc. Um, right, we are headed off. Yeah. So, um, just wait, to... wait, hold up. I oh, did. Uh, no, sorry, Scar. Did you get that thing? I should get. Totally. I uh, asked Sky Furiac to get you a, a plush of of Experiment One. Oh. Besman One. Oh, Wanzo? I love oh. Wanzo. Because oh, I know no. you didn't, in case you missed, I, uh... Was that bad? Did... Uh, it, was Is it the giving actual not... plush of the organism, or was it the cartoon? Sky... I took both. I will take the I organism. Bought, I bought both. I bought both. I will take the organism. You can keep the cartoon. Oh, um, actually, speaking of, this does remind me, uh, since we're here, um, just before we leave, uh, so the, the patchwork doesn't have any form of sophisticated AI um, in it, that like runs system operations it's very basic uh, pretty much everything has to be done manually uh, and because of what happened a lot of the uh, wild times because uh, wild times sells parks AI um, but not the park necessarily just like subsidiaries of the parks AI for to upgrade computer systems oh, no. sold by homo tech I didn't buy one I was wondering if we wanted to buy one I am ambivalent towards the prospect. This will be a decision for you four. I think I'd be okay with just continuing to do things manu manually for now. Yeah. I would be disappointed to not give our ship a goofy voice, but I will live if that is what the group comes to. I'm also kind of upset because we could have given it Wanzo's voice being the, the ship's AI, but that's fine. Okay. I feel like we've done enough torturing of Furiac. Alright, sure. Um, the last thing, just before we go through the drift, uh, reminding everyone that although for us, we're going to be traveling for what seems like a few days, uh, for the rest of the universe, it's going to be a few months. So, uh, just to keep us all up to date, I'm just going to watch the news for a little bit, and just to make sure I know everything before uh, we leave. Um, but I'm going to be doing that. Everything's pretty much set up. If everyone wants to get uh, just get your last little things ready uh, and then get all strapped in, I'm going to start lifting up the um, I'm going to start lifting up the the, uh, the ramp. Um, Scrap goes over to the TV and turns it over to uh, the news. Over the next few hours, there are several news broadcasts um, just uh, news broadcast of the cycle that the ACS solar system has been under. So I'm going to read a couple of 
random uh, news things you would have heard. <clears throat> the theme park The Leviathan's Eye crashed into the asteroid Field of Ra. An investigation by the Ulf Hethnar Council found a species of mollusks carrying a parasite that, when exposed for long periods of time, infect the mind of the host and puppeteering the body. The Ulf Hethnar found no survivors on the Leviathan's Eye, uh, equating over 12,000 lives lost. There is no leads as to why the station crashed. It is in the process of being cleared of infected before being dismantled. The finalization of the 590 trillion credit company merger of Brewery Mining and Cert Energy have made the company the number one provider of elec electricity and power in the galaxy. But the grind isn't over, according to the man leading the charge of the merger, Quinn Hylock, who says that the company is looking to acquire Hermoid Tech 2. Soon you will have everything you need in one place, says the executive. News from Saga, there has been an attack on one of the upper plates causing construction to be stopped as a local rebellion group led by the android Tommy bombed the structural skeleton of the plate, claiming that it would trap the people of the lower decks in complete darkness. The upper deck envoys deny this theory, stating that the rebel group are working with the lower decks gang The Void and being gained financial backing from an illegal street race. However, Tommy and The Void informants deny this. Satellites from all over the Aesir galaxy are falling uh, into the atmosphere, is making planet-to-planet -planet communication difficult, and the RAN engineering group Waterwheels believe that corporate budget cutting have led to failings in navigation, but no official cause has yet been given. Comedy has never been so explosive. An Ulf Hethnar ship was destroyed in the Aesir Comedy Club of Helium, killing four Ulf Hethnar and leaving one in critical condition. CCTV shows Heth opening fire on a group of people, but it is unknown whether or not the explosion was caused by a reactor meltdown or a third party. The Ulf Hethnar are still investigating. The mysterious deaths of Wild Times board members have been found out to be from the park's AI. The AI was giving full control of the park after being sold by Hermoy Tech. Hermoy Tech denies responsibility, saying that board member Lynn tampered with the AI after the founder Theriac went on a field research trip. The AI has been stripped away by Theriac in what onlookers are calling an incredibly heroic deed. The news cycle repeats these stories. And after a while, scrap. Loudly claps his hands together. Right. I'm ready to go. You all ready to go? Albunga. Okay. I'm ready. All right. Everyone gets strapped in. Uh, our destination, Scrap pulls down a, um, a, a almost like physical whiteboard that as they write on the writing... Uh, pings with a projector that's uh, shining on it and almost like his writing is being projected back into the ship. Um, he writes Vanir system, underlines it, and then writes uh, the planet Nos, N-O-S-S. -S. As he does so, there is a uh, the writing glows blue and then there is a small doo-doo as it is accepted into the computer system. Um, he pulls the, the whiteboard, it rolls back up, and then the engines begin heating up. As everyone sits down and straps in, the uh, patchwork gets louder and louder, the ramp locks itself in place. Flair and Keelan lock themselves in, as do the rest of you, and the patchwork takes off, leaving the other ships of the gateway struggling behind. Scrap flicks the drift lockdown, and the ship shudders as the drift core screams to life. Its place in the center of this ship glows, and large, rust feathered wings open on top of the ship. After years discarded, they stretch again, showing the atomless sea its potential. The drift core, now burning white hot, breaks itself apart and churns itself into these perfect geometric shapes until it forms a cone that spins around and points in a direction like a compass. 
Scrap uh, barrel rolls the ship moving toward where this compass is showing, the compass moving in the middle of the ship, held in place by this large pipe, uh, only um, only broken by this large glass cylinder in the center where this drift core is being kept. As Scrap points the patchwork toward where the drift compass is, the large mechanical wings <gasps> and start flapping like a uh, a large mechanical bird and you're pulled back into your chairs as the atomless sea out in front of you breaks into a multicolored wormhole you all see your bodies pulling leaving behind echoes of your image as you're all being pulled like uh, wonky 3d glasses showing inky black images of each other with these sparks of color like painting with petrol the multicolored wormhole fades away, revealing a space to you that seems to be still creating itself, building itself as you're looking at it. The space is dark, completely the opposite of the atomless sea. Its burst of color is no longer here. There are these pinpricks of light, these rainbow colors, almost as if occasionally you can see light being pulled through the prism. So, as I said, the space itself is still being built. The drift, the small pocket dimension that you've all found yourself in, is creating itself as you are all here. Forming around the patchwork as it's gliding through this unknown and getting you to your destination. And we're going to play a small game. It's a tiny little thing. I'm going to pose a question to each of you. And you will answer that question. And then I would like you to pass that question on to someone else. Uh, pass... Whoever, just say, this person's going to answer the next question. Um, okay. The answers to these questions is going to be forming the space of what the drift, the prism, looks like. Um, so, I'm just going to roll a d4. I'm going to have uh, Ike 1, Azam 2, Sky 3, Theriac 4, because that's easy. And that's going to be whoever is going to be answering the first question. Okay, 3. So, Sky. Yeah, like this is the pop quiz. It's not. It's okay. Who isn't in the party but someone who you think about a lot and what relation are they to you <laughs> <laughs> well flair does count as being in the party right because they're in it the depends what you mean by being in the party they're not an official part of the patchwork but they are on the ship well here i don't know why i'm answering this question so would flair be an appropriate answer flair i am gonna i am answer. i'm not i'm not locking in my lyrics yet but <laughs> i think i think she's actually gonna say hive think about hive yeah mm -hmm. she's worried about him off on saga where war's brewing and there's no calls going in or out last um, time she saw him, he stuck her he stuck his neck out for her yeah. So are there like there's like a lot of warm, kind feelings toward Hive as she thinks about him? In concern, yeah. Uh would you pass the next question on to someone? Just pick another one of the three. Dylan. Dylan. Hi. Dylan. Snatch. Hello. <laughs> if the ship, the patchwork was beginning to burn and you were the only one who was free. What would Ike do? Everyone's on the patchwork and it's burning? As it, or... yes. Just, it's just a theoretical question. This is just gauging Ike's... What, what would Ike do? In a hypothetical situation, if the ship suddenly caught on fire, what would Ike do? Would she try to help someone? Would she grab a thing and leave? Would she try to put the fire out? Um, I could try to save everyone as quickly as possible. Panic. She would panic. She would panic and she would act really quickly. And she would probably yell at the patchwork and make it help put the fire out. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, would you mind... Uh, passing the next question to either Theriac or Azam. Yes, Azam! Azam. <laughs> uh, as you 
shoot off into the drift. What does your body do? Does it tense up? Do you shut your eyes? Do you look to someone else? Do you think of something? What happens to his arm as they are getting pulled back in this seat? Um, I think a good amount of his arm cracks, literally. Mm. His joints are old. Uh, and he closes his eyes and thinks of home. Perfect. So there is a... Is there a panic in that, or is this a warmth? Comfort. It's the home of his youth before everything. Hmm. And I'm gonna pass it <gasps> over to... Ah! Uh? Theriac. Theriac. Your your question is is a little simpler. It is it is less of a hypothetical, but more of just a straight question. Okay. How calm is Theriac? Theriac at this current moment is actually quite calm. There's and a, a, a distance from a lot of the goings on that they had been trapped in for a good while. And while there's stressful things going on, they do not feel the same sort of high strung stress that they had been feeling for weeks on end. This mm. is very much a time of relief and recuperation from the panic that had been inside of them the non-stop adrenaline rush mm. as you all arrive into the drift the pinpricks of prismatic light start forming in front of you into hills rolling beautiful landscape you see other people who are also arriving into the drift <laughs> all getting on with their um, with whatever it is they're doing for any reason that they are traveling through the drift also are arriving around you people seem to be off in the distance been traveling this place for a few days huge ships tiny ones people who have the luxury of being able to travel from place to place the sky above you seems warm you can feel warmth from a sun that is not there there is a clarity in the air. You know that this warmth, this heat, this kindness of the sky is going to keep for your journey. And along these hills, there is this one path that falls over each hill, and then on the next one, you can see this path rising up again. And there are these shadows of people, these faceless wandering echoes of time and these shadows are talking to one another they're not saying anything that you can hear or understand but they are speaking in a kind and warm way and ignoring the ship as you fly through they all seem to be getting on with their daily life and you have all just arrived into the drift and we're going to take a break there oh no go on sky what would you like to do just right before the break so you all hear from inside sky's overstuffed backpack i'm just a little guy <gasps> <Shh>. <laughs> Stop it! I love you! Theriac oh is at the kitchen counter when 
Sky is like walking past and is like, I'm just a little girl. And like Theoric like freezes in place and just rotates. <laughs> <laughs> Take the raccoon out of my backpack. <laughs> He's just a little guy. I'll be right back. I have to go scream. <laughs> Then we can talk. <laughs> Wasn't a no guy. We can take a break now. <laughs> yeah, Theoret goes to scream. And as Theoret goes to scream, we're going to take a break. It's only going to be a couple of minutes, but come return uh, afterwards for... It's going to be a far a far shorter shorter second half, but there is going to be something in the second half. Oh, um, okay, cool. All right, yes. I will be back. All right. Thank you so much. Everyone go, go.
Oh, and we're all bloody old back here. Oh, I went on the wrong that's screen. Fine. Oh, we're all back that's here. That's crazy. Here. Oh, oh, my God. Look at that. Oh, my God. Um, that's looking crazy. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, hello, beautiful right. stars. Hey, thank you so much for coming back. The gang have just traveled, uh, are, are currently, rather, drift traveling, which is they are traveling super, super high speeds through a pocket dimension to get to another solar system. Um, uh, the gang have all just left Aesir, which is where we've been throughout the whole campaign so far, and they have left going into uh, Veneer, which is where this little second crystal is. So, again, just a very minor, really quick explanation of how the drift works. Um, Travelling from solar system to solar system takes anywhere from a few months to a few years through normal space travel. Uh, it is a thing which people do do, um, but it is difficult because there are uh, these un an unknown number of creatures called dro uh, Drauga or Droga uh, that are in the space between each individual solar systems. Um, the the way that drift travel works is it takes all of those months and through a thing called a drift core which is this mash of science and magic uh, like actual magic they uh make it so that there is a pocket dimension that opens up and then people uh go into the drift and then when they leave, it's only like a few days have passed for them. But uh, months have, uh, actual months have passed for the rest of the galaxy. Also, I'm hearing myself again, which is why I keep stopping. Uh, it might be me. One moment. It's okay. Uh... So, um, although it seems like it's only a few days for the people that are in the drift, um, it is the galaxy is still moving around them. It works off of worm, uh, worm hole, black hole technology. Um, so it, they create a small black hole that people go into, and then when they arrive, it's like, oh, it's only been a few days, but it's actually been multiple months, since it technically shrinks the ship that you're traveling on down super small and fires it in one uh, straight line. Uh, and actually, I'll I'll pick up that uh, that little conversation as Scrap. So Scrap has turned the seatbelt, the the drift lockdown off, so everyone can walk around now that we are officially inside of. Colloquially, people call it the prism, um, because it's kind of a place where a lot of things like it kind of looks like you're inside of a prism. There's a lot of like refracted light around. Um but is also just known as the drift. People kind of use both on and off, depending on who you're speaking to. But Scrap is, uh, has turned off the drift lockdown uh, sign so everyone can get up and walk around, as your next few days are going to be um, inside this space, uh, this small pocket dimension. And Scrap has started explaining how uh, the drift lockdown works. Um, he explains what I just did, and then continues so because we are technically at the minute like we are about the size of an atom and we've been shot really um uh, really hard and really fast toward the veneer system which is where we're going so normally pretty much 99 percent of the time we will just get to veneer in a few days and we can stop the problem is, is the space between galaxies is, has a lot of creatures and things in it. So if something comes up, I'm going to get a little warning. I'm going to have to angle the ship a little bit just to like co course correct and get around the thing because we can still crash whilst traveling in the drift. But... Um, if the thing is particularly big and we can't get around it through a few small movements just to keep us on course i'm going to take us out of the drift and then we will course correct put be put back in and then fly around um 
just warning people in case there's like ever there's like big alarm signals going off throughout the ship. The ship is fine. It just means that we might need to course correct or come out of the drift, correct ourselves in the space between, and then fire ourselves back out. But aside from that, we're pretty much just hanging around. Oh, remember, you can't... Uh, whilst we're here, you can't contact anyone who is outside uh, of the drift. And uh, that also counts for any signal. So you can't be... You can't, like, watch any form of news since we are currently in kind of a weird time warp zone. That all makes sense to me. Yeah, good. I'm quite bad at explaining things, but I, I, I hope... No, you, you, I did. you did a very, very fine job. Okay. Wow, well, I appreciate that. Yeah, it's, it's difficult to make uh, complex science comprehensible. So. <laughs> well, I had to make it comprehensible to get around it at all. Mm. Yeah, a lot of big words. Anyway, everyone, uh, you're, all, you're all free to go around and, and do what you will. I'm going to... Kind of just um, make sure the ship is all fine since this is the its first time through the drift, and I stole the Valkyrie wings. I didn't steal them; I took them from a ship. So I just want to make sure that they're all working correctly. And Scrap goes back to the captain's chair and then uh, types something on the old uh, typewriter that they have, getting ah. small prints. So. Sky. Yes, Dr. Theriac. I, um... I believe you have something to share with everyone? Uh, hmm? uh, uh, well, I, uh... I didn't know it needed an audience, per se, but I did... Nick the Raccoon! From Dr. Theory X Lab. The sweeping raccoon. The sweeping raccoon. I'm just a little guy. I, in the, in I, the corner of the I... room, this <laughs> raccoon is trying to pick up a broom and sweep it, but is having a little bit of a hard time. I think I might try and figure out the voice mod situation because I don't think that he necessarily enjoys it and it creeps me out a little and will probably get a little annoying after some time but in my mind this is guy and i am in love with him <laughs> ah. you know what i'm actually glad you did that why why are you glad <laughs> because it wasn't right what they did to him and you you even said so yourself so, maybe Sky will find a way to undo it. I mean, Scrap did say we each get one little creature. Not one that was stolen. Well, technically, that does mean that there are two creatures that were stolen, because I don't think Verpal is... That's uh, not correct. Verpal was... Because Verpal is considered a, a technically... Uh, vermin, an invasive species that came off planet and cohabitated once there was development of a dune. That's right. And he chose me. So, I didn't steal him at all. I did not realize that everyone's love of wildlife would be this expanded after wild times. Good job, Dr. Theriac. Well, a... no, you go. Go ahead. No, no, please. Uh, there's a crash from the kitchen, and uh, guy <laughs> runs with like a little, uh, like the pack of a pack of fries from the fast food place, and then like kind of uh, runs past behind everyone, and goes to a corner of Ig's room, and then Verbal <laughs> comes down, and then they both start eating the fries together. I'm just a little guy. Boop, 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 boop. Ow. Come on, Theriac. You Do can't tell me that's not the cutest thing you've ever seen. 
you do realize you've unleashed one of the most opportunistic things to ever exist in the universe. I was already on the patchwork. <laughs> also, we do have Flair now. Oh. <laughs> oh, hi! <laughs> we totally forgot you were here. You're so fine. <laughs> yeah, I know. Do you need me to print out a comprehensive species survival plan for raccoons? No, that's why I got a raccoon. They can eat gar- they eat garbage. I understand that diet is Like a plant I wide. can't kill. No, I understand. I understand. I'm asking, do you know what the raccoon needs beyond just trash? Beyond rubbish? Water. And love. <laughs> I'd say you probably have it covered. Maybe a bit of exercise. Where, where then... is <laughs> this specimen going to sleep? With me. Do you do you know if this specimen has the instinct to burrow? No, but I guess we'll find that out eventually, won't we? I kind of think it has the instinct to sweep endlessly. So we might not have to deal with that until we... Until Sky finds a way to shut that off. Sky. Keeping care of a creature like this is a very, very large responsibility for an entire laboratory. Let alone one person. I, I think Azam cuts in by talking to Guy, who's like grabbing his trousers. That's my trousers. Grab I'm just it. a little guy. <laughs> Still my trousers, bud. Didn't realize the gift I gave Matthew. Was <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, he's climbing. He's climbing me. Yep. <laughs> I take, I take him. <laughs> <laughs> no, you love it, you love it, dude. Just a little guy, and then he's like <laughs> trying to like scratch his way out. <laughs> yeah. I would also like to emphasize one of our primary goals with um with guy is to perhaps see if he is in fact sentient beyond just speaking the words, I am a little guy. I mean, to be fair, he does say I'm just a little guy. Oh, I'm so sorry. Beyond just saying I'm just a little guy. The last thing we want to do is to deny someone personhood just because of their limited vocabulary. Wait a second here. Uh, why are you implying that this raccoon might have sentience? Because that's pretty weird. This raccoon can speak. Yes? One sentence like a parrot. Parrots can speak. Are parrots sentient? And didn't Lynn put it there? Like, pre-programmed and everything. What exactly is a parrot? It's an Earth thing. I'll explain later. Okay. The point being, we don't know. It is now within our duty, your duty now, as its primary caretaker, to ensure that this specimen is in fact not sentient. Are you prepared really? for that? I mean, no, I it was I checking to see if guy was sentient sentient wasn't really on the list of responsibilities I thought I was gonna have. What, what do I gotta do? Like put him in front of a mirror or something? There there is a mirror test to indicate sentience, yes. I'm going to take Guy and I'm going to put him down in front of the nearest reflective surface. 
Then we dance around a little bit. <laughs> it, it requires more than a mirror. <laughs> if you were to put Guy down, uh, Guy, like, like, uh, is it called hunching your back? Where, like, cats do? Um, like, yeah. it, they go to, like, hiss. But then, like, slowly stands on, like, its hind legs, trying to make itself bigger. Almost look like it's T-posing in at the mirror. It's like a... <laughs> noise at it. I don't, I don't think it recognizes that that's itself. Is that a good thing? Sentience is neither good nor bad. The point is, is that we need to make sure that we are providing this specimen everything it requires. Okay. Are you ready to take on that responsibility? I don't know. I've never tried. Dr. Theriac, just to pose this as an idea, if she said no, what would we do? <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're in quite a pickle. Yeah. I think it's almost I like think, I planned that out. <laughs> I think perhaps we just need to roll with the punches on this one. I'm an ask for forgiveness, not permission kind of gal, Dr. Theriac. <laughs> okay, that's enough looking at your own reflection. <clears throat> and I kind of like, just gently start. Just a little guy, says to itself <laughs> in the mirror. <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah, okay. Let's, um, let's do back, back All right. to, to Greasy Snow. All right. <laughs> if... If you are, if you were not ready, or did not feel capable of taking care of this specimen, I would make sure that we got them to a refuge, a, a sanctuary, perhaps, because even though you you are being entertained by the specimen's presence. The specimen deserves respect and a healthy life. Yes? Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, I didn't I didn't just get them to entertain me. And I know it seems that way. Just want to make sure of your intent. It's very important. I I am hopeful that Gaigi can find a place I'm hopeful that you will take good care of him Am I out of the doghouse? No, not in the slightest. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, I like him. Uh, and Zama's sitting down <laughs> with Guy sitting on his lap and just like offering him a cube of cheese. You want a little cheese? You want a little cheese? Yeah. I'll Very uh, good thinking, Azam. Uh, Dr. Theriac, I will take those printouts when you got a minute. I figured you'd need them. I will do that. Keep it on the down low, though. I've got a reputation to uphold as, like, a, a you know, having a don't, having a don't care kind of attitude, you know? I want Guy to respect me. I have to it's, earn their respect. It's it's perfectly fine to ask for help. It's not, it's not a... In front of the raccoon, Dr. Theriac. All right, all right, goodness. <laughs> um, you kind of creature like scritches. Uh, it does, it goes for the cheese that you're holding, Azam, and, uh, you, you, you're, like, you have quite tough skin, because a lot of it is, like, magmatized and whatnot, um, and it, like, it bites your fingers in a way that you know that if you had, like, 
like flesh, it would properly bleed and hurt quite a lot um, as it's trying to like get the cheese. It's still a little feral. It is a, a raccoon after all, but then does take the cheese and is munching on it in your lap. I give it some light squishes behind the, like at the scruff of its neck. Uh, the first scritch is is met with a with a claw and a bite, but then it calms. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Little guy. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um. I can swear you... he looks like one of my nephews. <laughs> Your nephew uh, looks like a raccoon. Damn energy. Oh, I dig it. Um, as your as as guy is is sat in your lap, um, Keelan comes over. This large um, wolf person with this duster jacket on and t shirt and sweatpants. So, is wild animals coming aboard? Is that kind of the norm for this ship? Apparently. It's good. It's exciting. I mean, we've got, what, like five at this point? Okay. You've got Ig's little pet. Mm -hmm. You have the raccoon. Mm -hmm. That's two. Do you who else is included in this list? Because if I say someone, that implicates me on being rude. So if you mm. say it, then I'm... If you say it and confirm my suspicions, then that completely frees me. You have seen Flirt eat, right? Okay. That was one, yes. That one's easy. That one's a given. What are the other two? Well, then there's the uh, wolf in front of me. Right. Not a wild animal. Rude. Who is the mm. last person then? Because you have to mention a member of your own ship eventually. I. <laughs> <laughs> I look at him. I. I I'm a, like, there's a small distance away from the others. And I say, Well, you haven't seen what I'm capable of yet. And then I grin and wink. Right. So, is every Ifrit really bad at flirting and it just takes about 20 minutes to get to the point? Or is it just you? Is that a special skill from your charismatic days? Mm. I'm out of practice. Ah, I see. Also, who says I'm flirting with you? It would be really weird if you were flirting with... Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest, pretty much anyone else on the ship, because you have two teenagers, uh, two yeah. people who seem to uh, enjoy each other's company quite a bit, even though they're not admitting it yet. And We're not supposed to admit it at all. Yeah. It's and not a thing. Scrap, who... God bless him, but... Well, you two are just not the OTP that I am I see on the <laughs> ship. But you and I are. No, it's just, again process of elimination. If I get you to admit it, then I'm completely out of all uh, assumptions. I can be quite flirtatious with the right people, and you're right, I wouldn't exactly flirt with. We're all a bit young for me, but uh, mm. I am married. Oh. And I don't know how I can square that just yet. I mean, normally, Taking up another partner is not, not a big deal, but when you haven't talked to someone in a very long time. Right. Is that the plan? Because I'm pretty sure last time we talked, you were running away from that responsibility, so are you to... Oversimplification. I am not sure if I have an answer yet. 
I don't need one. Again, I'm just... If I don't say anything, then mm -hmm. I'm not implement... In indi indicated? Implemented? How the fuck do you speak trade? I'm bad at this. So am I. Anyway. Keelan. Hmm? I do enjoy your company. I'm going to be sad to lose it. Bit forward. And then, uh, Keelan, Keelan walks back off into, like, more of the center of the ship, but they're still within calling range. Bats, uh, flares legs as he has his legs on the table with the little holographic map. And then, uh, as Flair is leant back in a chair reading a comic with his feet up on the thing, Keelan... I Bats his, bats his legs and he sits up straight. I kind of like not really whisper but in a lower voice just talk to Guy. You know, we are very emotional people. I'm just a little guy. Yeah, I know you are, bud. I know you are. Continues to eat whatever you're handing him. A about a day and a half goes by. You have more than enough food to last you um, this long. And entertainment is pretty easy. Everyone is still very much in there. They're not bored of travel zone yet. But about a day and a half in, you... Scrap says that you have around six hours of travel left and a light goes off in the pilot's area. And then another one goes off near the back of the ship until the whole ship is kind of covered in these in this red warning lights with uh, a small alarm that's voot, voot, voot. I'm like, oh shit, uh, fuck. Okay, uh, everyone, um, I think we're about to hit something big, so we gotta get out the drift. So if everyone could sit down, just really fast. We're just, we're gonna try not spend a lot of the time in the space between, but everyone just gotta strap yourself in, okay? Okay. Yes, sir. Let's strap in. Uh. Put as my seatbelt all... on and then have a smaller seatbelt for Guy. <laughs> as you all strap in, the um, this series of rolling hills that you've been traveling down over the last few days with this warm sunlight, it all rushes toward you as scrap doof, comes out of the drift. There's not a lot of color whilst you were traveling through the drift, but thinking back, it feels like it was overwhelmingly bright in comparison to the horrific darkness that completely absorbs the ship. There is no light. You can't even see stars where you are. It feels like you are swimming through muck. The lights of the patchwork beam out and show a quarter of a planet in the middle of the space between. <clears throat> This completely annihilated section of a planet almost looks like a large crescent moon even coming to that very sharp point at the end. It stretches on just as if you were about to fly down onto this planet. 
at one end, it comes to this sharp point. And at the other, there is these red sacks. These pulsing, growing, almost organic matter. Like a thing pretending to be veins that only lightly make their way throughout this quarter of a planet. You watch, not locked in any form of gravity or solar system anymore, this planet turns quick. And Scrap pulls the ship back. Jesus, if this was a fucking planet, then this planet had... This planet was destroyed millennia ago. There's been nothing here for multiple millions of years. Is this where we're supposed to be? No, 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 no. This was just in our way. We just had to come out of the drift, because if we kept going in, we would have crashed right into it. But it wasn't supposed to be here. No. Hell. Do you right. know why? It's gonna take me a, an hour or so to pull the ship around and make sure we're in the right, right place to get back on our journey. Wonder is uh, light nearby enough so we can figure out what this planet was supposed to be. Mark it. Can, is everyone looking out at this quarter planet? Mm -hmm. yeah. In fact, I was gonna say if there's like binoculars or something. Didn't there the are, flare you give have, me special? You do. I have binocular goggles. <laughs> I was gonna like yeah. hook something onto my, my belt and hop out the window and throw on my gas mask and see if I can get better look at it. Um, Probably not because it is an entire planet, but. <laughs> I'm like, uh, wow, cool. Can everyone roll me a physical science, please? Physical science? I don't think I can make that roll. Uh, yes, if you're not, um, if you're not what? trained in the physical science, you unfortunately are unable to make the roll. Oh, got it. Okay. Uh, 19? Ooh. I also got 19. 31. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> can I um, connect to, like, the in extranet, intranet, holonet? Uh, you, in the space between, there are, there is no way to communicate mm. because the satellites are just too far away for you to properly get, like, a decent signal feedback. Um, so you try, but everything, like, refuses to load. In that case, can I mark it on a digital map so we can upload this new anomaly, uh, once we arrive so other ships don't fall into it? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's what I do. With Eigensky. This quarter planet has this gray off-white texture that covers it. Like a like like a rock. It has been smoothed, almost. These... 
sacks of red that cover the one full side of it, almost like one tip of it. Pulse erratically as you arrive. You, you notice the longer that you're there, the more it kind of pulses and almost like it's 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 trying to pull part like 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 it's feeding something to the tip of this of this quarter planet theory mm -hmm. looking it over looking at this planet that scraps right shouldn't be there even if it was part of a solar system that was millennia old. It is just this clean quarter, this crescent moon of a surface. Sky, as she looks through the goggles, points out this film of this dusty white And Theriac, through your research, through your expertise, and what you have given your life to, you realize that it isn't a dusty white. And this isn't a planet, but this is a tooth. And the pulsing red is gum, like something has shed a fang. A creature whose shed fang is the size of a planet. And as you look at it, the pulsing of the gum on top of this fang beats harder, and then there is a burst, and you see breaking out of these sacks these large winged snakes all fly out and they look at the patchwork they give a roar but the vacuum of space doesn't let the roar reach you but you can see these almost baby dragons as they fly towards the patchwork one of them opens its mouth there is this charge of energy as it and there is a bolt of lightning that shoots right past the patchwork, hitting part of the hull. Well. Uh, Scrap, noticing this, flicks on a sign and the alarms... Okay, we gotta get the fuck out of here because I don't know what that their plan is, but that does not look good for us. Everyone man the stations because it looks like we're under attack. Scrap flicks on the under attack sign. You guys got to wait them off, because I'm going to have to try and uh, reopen in the drift core. Palms the drift core. The drift core woof, 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 starts glowing again. And we are going to go into our first ship combat. Next time oh. on the Atomless. Oh, I would like yeah. I to turn to... Azam, assuming Azam is close by, and just say, Did we have stations? <laughs> <laughs> and on that, <laughs> the episode ends. <laughs> Okie dokie.
Okay. All right. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for being here, being here with the Adamless, our little Adamless show. Um, I appreciate you so much. That was episode 19, episode 20. We're going to get into some fucking ship combat and we're going to fucking see how that oh, rock and no, rolls. Shit. It's a whole oh, other man. system on uh, in Starfinder and I'm very, very excited to go see it anyway. Thank you guys so much for joining us here today. Um, my name is Madam Captain Crail on all things. You can find me at Captain Crail on all things. I also edit. If you were like, hmm, yes, I like this episode. I wonder what it sounds like with music and like ambiance and like sound effects and all that jazz and kind of narrowed it down to the point where it's just the story. Well, we're going to have a podcast that might come out next week. It might not, but I hope it will come out next week uh, <laughs> of this episode. Uh, it depends on how... Uh, scared busy I get um, however we are entirely up to date I believe when you're watching this which would be on the 9th that we're is that possible for us to be entirely up to date with the with the podcast yes yeah perfect um, but yeah that's 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 me thank you so much for joining us just someone else want to fucking go do a little social run hi <laughs> I'm that? Andre Andre Vera Art on many social medias now. Andre Vera dot art, so you can see all my shit. Commission me before the holiday uh, run up because I need some time to make a good present for your folks, <laughs> your peoples. Beautiful. That's it. Nice, wonderful. Who want to go next? Hi, I'll go. Hello, I am Dylan or Super Hello. Dylan everywhere on the internet. You should go and get my games on Super Dylan at itch.io. I have so many games. Get them. Most of them are free. Just get them and they're fun. That's <laughs> it. That's it. That's nice. It's clean. Right. Who next? I'll go next. Yeah, Hello. go for it. We gotta figure out a better I, system to this. <laughs> uh, uh, my name is Momo O'Brien. You can find me everywhere at Momo underscore O'Brien. I make content about immersive experiences. <laughs> Perfect. And not not in the league. Like to go, pop. Hello, I'm Ludine like a deer. My pronouns are he him. You can catch me on all social medias at Werewolf Feels. As for what I do, honestly, a lot. But I work with other groups. So don't worry about it. However, if you want more roleplay, you can check me out over on Grimrose Academy, a show currently on Rolf. Other than that, uh, for all you know, I do nothing. Do we even have proof I exist? Follow the Atomless. <laughs> follow the animus. Do that. Oh, follow the animus. Don't okay. slight me, man. And also, the moon doesn't exist either. We know that because we discussed it earlier today. We are not yes. doing this again. Okay. Um, <laughs> last I checked, we're a moonless celestial body. Moonless For the celestial love of body. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for listening to uh, uh, this show. Next time we fly through the atomless, moonless sea, I hope you are there to fly with us. Thank you so much. The mood isn't real. <gasps> 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 <gasps>